Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was just studying some whiskey flavor chemistry. My name is Jeff DeBrow, and here at the Flavor Research and Education Center at the University of Minnesota, we're trying to make the foods you love taste better. But Jeff, you might be asking, what do whiskey flavor and chemistry have to do with one another? Well, the answer is a lot, actually. Although we don't usually stop and think about what makes bread taste bready, or whiskey taste like, well, whiskey, what it all comes down to is chemistry. Everything around us, from this desk to this bottle of whiskey, are all composed of different molecules. So whenever we smell or taste a food, what's really happening is that we're experiencing mixtures of hundreds or even thousands of different chemical compounds interacting with our taste buds and receptors in our nose. So if we want to figure out how to make foods taste better, we first need to understand the chemistry of the foods themselves. Now, because food is so complicated and has so many different chemical components, our first step is to break the foods down into something simpler. We do this using a machine called a chromatograph, which takes these complex mixtures like foods and separates them out into their individual molecules. Once everything is separated out, we can use an instrument which acts like a giant scale for tiny things, called a mass spectrometer, to weigh molecules. And this gives us an idea of a molecule's identity. Now, all of this might sound a little bit stuffy, but the applications are pretty neat. For example, one main consumer complaint about whole wheat bread is that it's bitter. People know it's healthy, they know it's good for them, they just don't want to eat it because it doesn't taste good. So if we want to help make people make healthy food choices, we need to make better tasting food. One of my colleagues did this using these tools like liquid chromatographs to separate out the compounds in whole wheat bread and see which ones were bitter. She then traced back the formation pathways to find out the causes of this bitterness. But coming back to whiskey, if we want to understand why aged whiskey generally tastes better than young whiskey, we need to use a little bit of a different approach. And that's because age isn't just a single note like bitterness in bread. So we can't just fractionate out the whiskey and taste for age. Instead, we use our instruments to examine whiskeys of different ages, the young whiskeys and the old whiskeys, and create chemical fingerprints for young and old whiskeys. We can compare the fingerprints of the different aged whiskeys to see which compounds are different, right? Which flavors are different. And once we have a good idea of which molecules are different between the young and old whiskeys, we can taste those compounds. And we can see which compounds change the flavor of the whiskey in ways that we like. For those compounds which change flavor in ways we like, we can go back and find out how they're naturally formed. And then we can go talk to distillers and give them advice on how to tweak their production in ways to make whiskey which naturally tastes better. Now that's chemistry you can drink.